Yeah. 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 Back. Back. Back with another freaking. Huh? Video. See that thing, that ponytail just swam? Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, What's look, going on, Look guys? at that. It's ashy. Quite gross. What's going on, y'all? So glad you're with us. What's been happening? We did a live. We're going to keep doing more of those. That was really, really fun. And it was great talking to you guys. So keep hopping on, guys, when we do the lives. I love it. I love it. Because we want to do a meetup soon. I want to do a meetup. When we get to 75K, we're going to do a meetup. Somewhere. In LA, I think that should be a. a I think that needs to be a hundred. We'll see. A hundred ones a meetup, man. Celebration. That's a vote. celebration. Okay, let's see. Y'all vote. Let's go. Charlie Murphy. <laughs> what we got? Hey, so we got um, so we got Trevor Noah versus Tom Sawyer versus Trevor Noah on slavery and reparation. So this is really good. So I guess this is between the two opinions because that's so funny to see that because we were doing a lot of Trevor Noah videos. Now there's a video. What who we work who we've been learning educating ourselves with Tom Sowell saying a versus with them two on reparations. So interesting. So to your question, to your question, I think you have to understand what the word reparations means first. So reparations, you are repairing something that you have broken. You are paying for something that you were supposed to pay for. I'm not saying that there aren't people living in America today who are suffering and are going through pain and strife because of what's happening when it comes to, um, you know, uh, machines taking jobs, uh, factories becoming industrialized, etc. But reparations is a specific conversation about a specific time in America, and that is black people were slaves. Article that got a lot of attention in The Atlantic a couple of years ago called The Case for Reparations by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Quote, White supremacy is a force so fundamental to America that it is difficult to imagine the country without it. Reparations is the price we must pay to see ourselves squarely. Close quote. And Tom Sowell, who actually saw Jim Crow with his own eyes and experienced it, responds, how? It would be nice to know his uh, evidence for what he said, just to be old-fashioned about it. Uh, no, it, 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 it was a rotten system. But I don't know how, how, how we get from that to reparations. I mean, what we see in the United States in terms of the bad things, you see all around the world. If you were to give reparations to everyone whose ancestors had been slaves, I suspect that you would have to give reparations to more than half the entire population of the globe. Wow. Slavery was not confined to one set of races. I suspect that most of the people who are either slaves or slave owners around the world were neither white nor black. Mm. I mean, this was, this was a universal curse of the human species. Mm. Africa, the Middle East, Asia, oh, slavery took place and, everywhere. And, and, and it continued elsewhere long after uh, wow. it, it was abolished in the Western countries. Wow. You know what I mean? It's, I've even heard people say like, oh, but there were some of the Irish who were indentured. Like, yeah, let's slavery. Look at the numbers, look at the time, look at the level of work. You could not work toward your freedom. For most black people in America, this was a time when you were, that was it, you lived. Um, oh, sidebar and they're on the history of slavery. <laughs> I meant to hit the butt, space bar. Yeah, yeah. In America, he's highlighting in America. He's talking about America exactly. specific, yeah. And that's where I think a lot of us are you know, Stuck. getting hung up on. That tape keeps getting rewinded and staying like the elevator won't go past the fifth floor. Eh, eh. It keeps in America. And he just made a great point as to all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, all over the world. That's the trap that we keep getting caught in. Yeah. So yep. we can't break the cycle to propel past that. Yeah. Okay. I just had to say that. About The other thing, I have a slight... Um, Sidebar and they on the history of slavery. Mm -hmm. The history of slavery, slavery existed all over the world for thousands of years among all sorts of people as far back as the history of the human species goes. It's one of many evils that the left tries to localize mm. when, when in fact it is, a, it is a universal evil. But more than that, as much as slavery is repudiated around the world today, Prior to the 18th century, I know of no serious effort to abolish the institution anywhere. Mm. Anywhere. Mm. Anywhere. Not in Africa, not in, not oh, in the Arabian world. Not in Africa in the 21st century. Mm. Uh, when Adam Smith wrote in, in 1776, 
that the only place in the world where slavery had been abolished completely was Western Europe. Wow. Uh, and so this was... As late as, as, late as, the, as late as the year this country was founded. Yes. And so the idea that this is something that the United States had that nobody else had or, or the, the other, other countries... Because that's the ignorance that I had and, so, and many other people have thinking that it was only here. It existed nowhere else. So we should get, but now it's like, you have turned over every dollar to pay pay everybody who was nationality of slave. It didn't have, uh, it's been estimated that there are more slaves in India than in the entire Western Hemisphere. Wow. And that's quite, and that's before and after Columbus got here. Right. Uh, and so I hear what you're saying. But I think that's a completely separate conversation that needs to be had about the now. Because if you, if you are not careful, what you then do is you combine everybody's suffering into the same ball and you make it seem like all injustices have the same weighting. And they don't, just like crimes. You know, theft isn't the same as murder. We don't try them the same way. And as much as there is a white person who's suffering today, I feel for anybody who's suffering, because I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to suffer. I didn't come from a wealthy family. We struggled when I was growing up. But I also understand that there are levels of that suffering, you know? And so sometimes white people, it, it, does, it does block a white person because you go, white privilege, and a person goes, I'm poor and I'm white, where's the privilege? You know, white people are like, I wish I could activate my white privilege. I wish I could do it right now. White privilege, give me something. <laughs> I, I get that, I get that, trust me, I get it. It is hard to accept that you have benefits because of the color of your skin if you cannot see the benefits that you have. The book that I'm writing now, I, I discover this is true not only in the United States, uh, it's true in England, and the, and the situation is wholly different. And yet, if you read uh, the the data, for example, from from uh, London, the the, the uh, educational tests and so forth, you see that uh, there, uh, immigrants from Africa uh, pass this test. They have. Uh, I'm talking about low income people now. Uh, six, nearly 60 percent of the time, uh, uh, blacks from uh, the Caribbean, like 50 percent, so on. Native-born whites in the same low-income bracket pass this test 30% of the time. Uh, and it's the same thing. The, the foreign people come in, they haven't had generations of being steeped in the welfare state vision, the vision of grievances, victimology, and resentments, and an idea that there are enemies out there dedicated to keeping you down. That's the, that, that's the message that's been pumped into the head of the, of the white lower class in Britain. And that's the, uh, the image that's been pumped into the black low-income people in the United States. And the, and the results are the same in both cases. But the thing I try to explain to a person is, think of it more like golf. Don't think of it as privilege, then think of it like a handicap, right? In golf, they acknowledge that you are in a position where you need so many advantages to be competitive in the game. Is that, is that we ought not to be doing this? You know, there are, there are various uh, laws and policies that benefit one group at the expense of another. But I think uh, affirmative action has the distinction of being one that it harms everybody, though in different ways. And so you, you, it, there, there, there's a lot of evidence that there are black kids who have all the qualifications to be successes in college, who nevertheless are failures because they are systematically mismatched with institutions whose standards they don't meet, even though they may meet the standards of 80 or 90 percent of the colleges in America. I remember, I first aware of this when I was teaching at Cornell, hmm. and I found that half the black students at Cornell were on some kind of academic probation. And so I went over to the administration building and looked up the SATs of these students. The average black student at Cornell at that time scored at the 75th percentile. Which had, is pretty darn good. Yes. And so that means that in, that in most colleges in this country, they would have no trouble, and many of them would be on the dean's list. Wow. But at Cornell, the average uh, liberal arts student at that time was in the 99th percentile. Wow. And, and, when, you, when, you, and when you're teaching the stu students like that, uh, you teach at a pace that most people of any race cannot keep up with. And I, I was, it was always complained that I was assigning all kinds of uh, reading but heck, you know, I'm teaching kids who are in the top 1%. They can, they, they can keep up with, it, with the reading that I'm right. assigning. 
Uh, so Cornell was taking very talented black kids and spending four years teaching them to feel inadequate. Yes, Su and succeeding at that. Mm. Right, so what they say is you wow. have a handicap of 15, so that means like you're going to be hitting from this tee and you get more chances to get the ball in because we understand the position you're in. And if you're a black person in America, from slavery, from day one... Pondering all this, I, I noticed something, a, a column that you wrote, this is a couple of years ago, in which you rebutted Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times. And Kristof had ascribed the gaps between African Americans and whites in America, gaps in wealth, gaps in educational achievement, the usual gaps, mm -hmm. to, and this is a quotation from Kristof, to the lingering effects of slavery, close quote. Oh, yes. And here's Tom Sowell, quote, if we wanted to be serious about <laughs> evidence, we might compare where blacks stood 100 years after the end of slavery with where they stood after 30 years of the liberal welfare state. In other words, we could compare hard evidence on the legacy of slavery with hard evidence on the legacy of liberals, mm. close quote. And so the number of injustices that have held black people back in America amount to an insurmountable, like you, you, look, at, you look at black people's freedom, you look at black people's land, just, just land alone. The amount of wealth you can, you can acquire over time if you own land is exponential because you have the land, you have the fact that you can borrow based on the land, you have the fact that you can use the money that you have borrowed to grow more wealth, you can use it to grow your family's wealth, just taking that away from black people alone. Right, right. And also, if, so if you think you've been done, if you think you've been wronged, your recourse might also be more likely to politics to try to, to, try to redress this whole redistribution, yes. Oh, yes. rather than hit the books, acquire the skills, Get the well, job. And, and, and but the other thing, too, I, one of the, my favorite uh, statistic in there is that uh, the poverty rate among blacks as a whole is 22%. Mm -hmm. Among whites as a whole is 11%. And among black married couples is 7.5%. Mm -hmm. So, and, so it's been, and, and black married couples have never had a, a, a poverty rate as high as 10% in any year since 1994. All right. So to the, to, the, to the cry, what is to be done? Tom Sowell answers. It's been done. Get an education, stay mar get married, have kids after you get married. That's, that's sort of the answer, right? Well, yes, and the things that work for other people work, work, tend, tend to work pretty generally. That's why I'm a big fan of God's plan. Because if you if you are a believer in God and you read His Word, it's supposed to roll like that anyway. So the issues that they have really tend to seem to start before you start following the plan. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is crippling them, and so you combine that with slavery, and then you look at Jim Crow laws. You didn't let black people in America live in the areas that they wanted to live in. They couldn't get loans from the banks that they wanted to get loans from. And then on top of that, when they started getting the loans from American banks, American banks were found to be giving them higher interest rates when, in fact, they were the same risk as many of the other races that they were they were, they were giving loans to. So when you combine all of those things, I think it's safe to say that black Americans have a conversation that they need to be having with the United States. It's doesn't involve me, doesn't involve white people, doesn't, it's like, it's like, yo, American government, meet the black people. That's it. Have that conversation. In terms of political leaders, all the, all the incentives politically are for, for black leaders to blame all problems in the black community on the larger society. And that enables them to take on the role of being the defender of the black community against enemies, which in turn, uh, creates the situation in which many blacks don't feel that anything that they do is going to, is going to help themselves unless it's done politically as, as a group. Mm -hmm. That there's no point. I mean, why, why would you, if you believe what, the, what, that's what they say, why would you want to knock yourself out in the school knowing that the man is not going to let you get anywhere? Well, I, one of the most pathetic things I heard in recent years was a young black man saying that, you know, at one point he thought he would join the Air Force and become a pilot. And then he says he realized that the white man is not going to let a black man become a pilot. Mm. And he was saying this decades after the Tennessee Airmen had established their reputation in combat in Europe. Wow. Mm. You know, but, he, but the hopelessness 
hopelessness is, is one of the big products of the of the race industry. Yeah. That, that you have you have no chance. Mm -hmm. I remember giving a talk at Marquette, and at the end of the talk, among the questions that was asked, a young again young black man got up and he said, "Even though I am graduating from Marquette uh, University, what hope is there for me?" And uh, having gone through college when I was in the 50s, I don't remember any blacks saying that in the 1950s, mm. when there was a lot more obstacles to overcome than there were when this guy is graduating from Marquette. Wow. But, you, but you have to pr pr produce that kind of feeling in order to serve the interests of those in the race industry. Mm. Somewhere, watching this interview, there's a young Thomas Sowell. There's an African-American who's smart and wants to do something with his life. What's, it se seems to me I've al we've already got one piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the from the races industry. Stay away from mm -hmm. the what race what, ad what advice uh, race hustlers. What advice would you give a young Thomas Sowell? How do you make something of yourself as an African American in America today? The way anybody else would. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. Exactly. All right. Ooh, well, that's it. Wow, wow. Yep. That's or sell something that we're willing it. to pay for. Yes. Because now this is the day of the internet. It has, it has been proven time and time again how many, you know, young people of all different nationalities are thriving. Yeah. Based off of products services and being themselves so yeah i mean there you go there hope, it is you know hope you, you still have to believe in yourself believe in yourself because if, if someone looks like you did whatever that thing is you have no excuse gary b said that and that's real Ooh. if you have somebody that looks like you that has done outstanding and extraordinary things you're up next you are up next you are. All right, guys. This was really good. It's this amazing. Really, really oh good. my God, this is like and education. That's why you gotta check. You gotta fact check people. Get my education. Even our good old Trevor. You, you, you know. Yeah. He, and one of the claims he said was, "See the description below for the real facts." So once again, goes back to what I said on our live. Go back and check that out in the previous videos that we have to do our own homework and not rely on someone else's information. That's right. Check more than one source, reputable sources. And stay away from CNN. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nosedive, but comment down in the section below. We'll definitely do some more. I want to see you so. Oh, somebody trying to get some ramen in. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, y'all. See you in the next video. We love you guys. Subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. And don't forget to like this. Why would you not? Road to 100K, man. Let's go. Love you guys.